everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I lost the first part of the video so I've had to record it so it's going to look a little bit different to the rest of the video now but here are just some little bits about my placements and some more information for you and then I'll do part two of the video um, which is going to be my top tips for placement which is to follow this one. It is an NMC requirement that you do 2,300 hours of practice placement, so you have to fit those into your university, whichever university you're at, whichever placement you're at, they're the hours that you have to do, it's mandatory. And also something else that, they have, that you have to do is experience the 24 hour care system. So you will be expected to do some sort of twilight shift or a night shift so that you can experience the whole care system and that is a requirement. There's no set amount of night shifts that you have to do, but it is a requirement that you at least experience that. So firstly, I'm gonna tell you everything I know about placements. And as always, there is a disclaimer. So this disclaimer goes to everybody. I'm at Birmingham City University. So we get two placements a year and they can run from eight weeks to 12 weeks long. Now, just because I do that does not mean that you do, you'll do that. It depends on the university, how the university runs. So always check the details with your own university because some universities will have only four weeks of placement and then back at university, then four weeks of placement, then back at university. So just please check your own guidelines and policies and procedures and all of that jazz on placements before you listen to anybody else's advice. Okay, thank you. Okay, so placement hours. If you're on a ward, you'll either be working 7 a.m. till half 7 p.m. or half 7 p.m. till 7 a.m. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Those are the hours usually on wards, give or take half an hour. Sometimes it's eight or eight, sometimes it's half seven to eight. It just, it varies between different hospital areas, different trusts. So just check with your own placement area what hours you're going to be doing. But usually it's a 12 hour shift and you'll do three shifts a week and get four days off. Who doesn't want four days off? <laughs> but because it's only three shifts a week and that's 36 hours, you have to do one extra shift every fourth week where I work. So for three weeks, you'll do three days a week. And then on that fourth week, you will do the one extra shift. So you'll do four 12 hour shifts for that one week. And that just bulks up your hours and just balances all the hours so that you're doing the correct amount of hours that you, you need to do for your placement. If you're out on a community placement and it's not a ward-based placement, you might be doing Monday to Friday, nine to five, or you might be doing Monday to Friday, but the, the shifts are all different. So you might do what I did, which was a long day on Monday, nine till seven. Then you do a short day on a Tuesday, like nine till two, and then Wednesday, nine till five, like all different shifts, but you'll always have the evenings free and the weekends free, and you won't work bank holidays, which is a mega bonus. Who doesn't want a bank holiday off? Come on. <laughs> It is lovely. Although to be fair, I really don't mind working weekends and bank holidays. Everything seems so chilled and relaxed at those points when you're out on placement. I don't know why. It just feels really nice to be on placement on a weekend or bank holiday. I have no idea. Everything's just calm. I've just jinxed it now. Next time I work a weekend or a bank holiday, it's gonna be panic. But you've got to experience it and see for yourself um, what you think. So I know with our placements, we have to work with our mentor 40% of the time during placement. So 60% of the time you could be working with anybody you want. Well, anybody they put you with. So you could be with the healthcare assistant, you could be with an, a second buddy mentor, as they call it, who is your second person in line to go with if your mentor's off or on holiday. You are assigned that second person to go with. You can also have a pathway on placement. So you might be able to go to visit theatres. Some places do a whole week pathway where you experience the whole week system. So you'll experience like the pre-op assessment, you'll experience the outpatients, you'll experience theatres, recovery, HDU, and then back onto the ward. So it's like a full pathway of what a patient will experience when they're being admitted to hospital. And that's really, really good for your learning. It's really important to know what a patient goes through and it gives you that little bit more empathy for the patient, I suppose. If you do get the opportunity to go to theatres, please drink plenty of fluids and eat before you go down there. Pretty much 90% of the people I know have fainted whilst in theatre and you are that second casualty. So just make sure you eat, hydrate and make sure th that you're prepared for what you're about to see because it can be a little bit brutal, especially if it's orth orthopaedics and they're chipping away at bones and things. 
it is brutal when you see something like that and you're not prepared for it so just make sure you eat get some energy going get your adrenaline going and that's all i can really advise but just make sure you eat and keep hydrated because you're really going to need it for our placements, I don't know if it's the same across the board, but we have placement documents that we have to get signed off. There'll be little boxes of competencies that your mentor will watch you do and they get them signed off. So there'll be things like remove a cannula, personal care. There'll be different sections in the book. So professional values, communication, teamwork and self-management, nursing, decision-making and management, just things like that. And your mentor will go through and sign it off as, as you go, get, get your competencies signed off. There'll be a timesheet at the back to log all of your hours so that you're hitting those hours. Um, that's the bit that we submit. We submit the timesheet to show that we've completed those hours and your mentor is happy to sign you off and say you're safe to carry on to your next placement or further on in the, d the degree, whatever it is. So I don't know if every university has that, but I think the majority of universities will have some form of document that you need to fill out and sign and get signed off um, your placement. You will have a uniform for placement. They are uncomfortable, they're not very nice, They um, anyone that's attracted to the nurse uniform is so wrong because it is horrendous to wear. Your trousers will come up, <laughs> I don't know if you can see this, they will come up to here, they're, they're really not comfortable. It feels like you're wearing cardboard that first week, first weeks even, until they sort of wash and they've got some give in them. Um, they're, they're not pleasant, let me just put it that way. But you feel so proud putting on that uniform, walking into placement fresh, clean, crisp. You feel so proud. I cannot even explain the amount of pride I have when I put on my uniform. Even to this day, it's a proud moment. I, I'm, I'm there, I'm a nurse, I'm going to be a nurse. And it, you just can't get a better, just, there's no better feeling than wearing that uniform and wear it with pride. The uniform will vary, so I say the uniform comes up like this, but it depends what trust you're at, what university you're at. You'll have a completely different uniform to what I have. I know some people have a bit more of a relaxed uniform. It looks like they've got these really nice tunics that look really comfortable compared to ours. So it just depends on you, your uniform policy, your placement area, your university, all of that jazz. So your uniform might not be the same as mine, but I know ours aren't the most comfortable, but you wear it with pride. Also with uniforms, you have to wear the black or navy blue leather fully enclosed shoes that are safe basically, because you might get feces on them, you might get urine, you might get blood on them, you might get vomit on them. Everything is probably going to go on those shoes and they have to be quite thick as well because of manual handling. So wheelchair or hoist, if that's going to run over your feet, you're going to want your feet to be supported. Trust me, I have gone over my foot with a hoist before. It's not pleasant, but luckily I had sturdy shoes on, so it was fine. Next piece of advice is you can't wear rings and jewellery, facial piercings, like I've got a nose stud, but I take it out for placement. Earrings, you have to be just simple studs. Simple studs and a wedding band are the only two things you're allowed to wear on placement. You can't wear diamond rings, you can't wear lip piercings, tongue piercings, nose piercings, eyebrow piercings, any of that. It's just, it's not allowed. It's infection control and patient safety. So just don't do it. Stick to your policies and guidelines of your university, of your placement. Make sure you, you know what you can and can't do and what you can and can't wear because the last thing you want is to be pulled up into the office <laughs> about being unprofessional and yeah, you just don't. Just don't do it, it's not worth it. Also your hair has to be up and off the collar. I usually put mine up, put it in a bun and just completely off the collar because if it drops down into something you know when you're cleaning wounds and things you might get splash back and um, your hair might go into a patient's wound you just don't know there's 101 things that could happen with your long hair so just make sure it's up and off the collar i know in our trust that i'm at they're very very strict and they will observe you from head to toe as you walk and past them you can see them analyzing you looking you up and down making sure you look the yeah <laughs> so and i have seen people being pulled up for having literally strands of hair onto their collar um or even just having having a ponytail and the ponytail has hit the collar i've seen people be pulled up for that and they've been warned that, that they will get their placement documents and they will make comment about their unprofessional uniform dress attire whatever you want to call it they will document it in there so just be mindful of that make sure you've got crisp clean uniform no jewelry hair up in a bun this isn't a fashion show <laughs> 
So what have I done so far on placement as a student nurse? That's what you really want to know. You want to know the nitty gritty of what you're going to be doing when you're out there on placement. So things I've done is personal care. You will help wash and dress patients who can't physically do it themselves. But those that can do it, you have to encourage and motivate those people, you know, promote self-care and get them to do as much as possible to keep that independence because that's going to really help them recover quickly and get them home a lot faster because that's one of the assessments that the occupational health team do is a washing and dressing assessment. Make sure they can do it themselves so that when they go home, they're going to be able to manage on their own. You might have to brush teeth. Do you know what? I'm going to tell you this now. I love brushing dentures i know i don't know why but i just love it if someone can't brush their own dentures i am well chuffed that i get the opportunity to brush their teeth and they're like oh it's just so satisfying i don't know why what is wrong with me but it is one of my favorite top things to do is brush dentures what can i say as well as helping them wash and dress the top half, you're going to help lower half as well. So you're going to have to wash somebody's bottom, you might have to wipe their bottom if they can't do it themselves, you're going to have to wash the vagina, the penis, you're going to have to dry it, you're going to have to put cream on it if it needs cream. Only if they can't do it themselves. If they can do it themselves, get them to do it themselves. And some people might push their look and get you to do it for them but you know that they can do it themselves, so you have to really encourage that patient to try and do as much as possible for themselves. And we make sure we put them at ease and maintain their dignity when we do these things because it's not nice and it can't be nice for somebody. So just make sure you, you maintain that respect for the patient as well whilst you're, you're doing those intimate parts. Yeah, maintain the dignity, keep that person covered head to toe if you can and just expose the areas bit by bit as you're washing them rather than, than, than just yeah just make sure you maintain dignity it's not nice other things I have done are skin inspections, so when you're washing and dressing a patient, head to toe inspection of the skin, make sure there's no cuts, any pressure areas, any skin breakdown, all of that jazz, and then you document it. You're going to be doing observations, so blood pressure, respiratory rate, pulse rate, temperature, pain management, asking them how their pain is, is it well managed, if it's not, pass it over to your mentor. You'll be removing cannulas, you can't insert cannulas, you can't do anything to do with veins, so you can't take blood, you can't do IVs, you can't insert cannulas, the three things you cannot 100% do. But with the new NMC guidelines and things, I think you might be able to do those. So make sure you're up to date with the new guidelines because right now I know that I can't do those things. So I'm following those policies and procedures and making sure my pin is safe. <laughs> Before I've even got it, I don't want to lose it. So I'm following all of the guidelines I can. But you can remove cannulas. So I remove cannulas. I do wound management. So I do wound dressings using aseptic technique. I remove clips and sutures. I've dressed leg ulcers, I have inserted a female catheter, I've removed catheters, I've changed catheter bags over, I've done fluid and food balance charts, I've done different assessment tools on patients, I've done medication rounds with my mentor, I've given medications, I've given injections, I've given insulin, I've given different routes of medication, so I've done PR, I've done oral, it's in the eyes for eye drops, I've done tablets, I've done solution, injections, what else? IM injections, subcut injection, I think that's it for injections, I've done all the injections I think, so I've done quite a lot of routes. I've given enemas, which if you don't know what that is, have a google, it's a beautiful procedure, have a look. I have admitted a patient, I've discharged a patient, I have run to different wards to get stock because we ran out, I've cleaned down bed area spaces ready for the next patient, I've done documentation in the care plans, I've written all of the care notes, what I've done for that patient, I've helped with meal time, so I've helped um, assist feeding a patient, I've helped patients eat, I have taken the food orders, I have given out the food, I have literally, I've done so much, I can't even remember. On my GP placement, I've done absolutely loads. I'm not going to go into too much with that because it's so much. I've done whole separate vlogs. Go and have a look at that one. 
I've answered the phone, I've sat and reassured patients, I've reassured the family members, I've sat and talked to family members, I've done a handover as well, literally on my very first placement I did a handover, I've done the last offices of a patient, so this is where a patient has passed away and you have to prepare the body basically so just like you, you get them ready as if you were getting them ready in the morning so you, you'll help them wash dress head to toe make sure they're clean with the hairbrush the teeth's clean things like that it's um it's a tough one to talk about but i think whether it's because the the patients that i've dealt with they've all been elderly so I think in my mind, I think, do you know what? They've had a really good life. They've had such a good life and now they're at peace. Now they're with their husband, with family members that have passed away. And I just think it's an honor. It's an honor to do that last offices for someone because that is literally the last piece of care that that person will ever receive in their life. And that's you, that's you giving them that care and making it special for them. Um, I think it's just a really rewarding experience and make sure if you do do that to debrief afterwards make sure you open up about your emotions and talk to your mentor about it afterwards because it's really important to just offload because it can be emotionally draining at the same time so just make sure you get the support and help if you're really struggling. I've also done peg feeds, I've done NG tubes and supervision of my mentor because your mentor always has to do everything with you. Um, you have to be supervised, that's actually one thing I need to say, you have to be, as a first, especially as a first year, you have to be supervised doing things, you can't just go off and give someone medications without being supervised, you can't give injections without being supervised, you have to make sure that your mentor or a, a qualified nurse is with you to supervise you doing that so that you're safe when you're doing that. I've done diabetic foot checks, I have done... What else have I done? Oh, I've done so much, I can't even remember. I hope I've got everything in here. I think I have. If I think of anything else and I haven't put it in the video, I'll put a comment below, okay? So that's it everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you've got any questions, you wanna know any more information, please feel free to contact me. You can connect to me on my social media. My inbox is literally always open or put a comment below. I'm more than happy to help you and answer any questions if you've got any questions. But that's it from me, have a great weekend and I shall see you all next week. Mm -hmm.